So it's been one month since Sony launched their new flagship headphones, the 1000X Mark Vs. And when they came out, there was a lot of excitement, a lot of claims that these are the best of the best, the best wireless headphones you can buy. But now that it's been a month, I wanna talk about what it's actually like to use these as I've been using them in many situations on a day-to-day -day basis, from working out to commuting to working in an office to just hanging out and listening to music and all of those, I found some things that are not just based on the spec sheet. So I wanna spend this video talking a little bit more about the nuances of these headphones to help you decide whether or not they're actually the best pair for you to buy. So this is sort of like a, a day in the life. I kinda of wanna break this down into different categories of like when I was using them. So what it's like to use them when you're working out, what it's like to use them when you're commuting. And I wanna break it down kind of in that sense. So starting off with when you're working. I do a lot of working, I'm always editing videos and wearing headphones is a critical part of that. I'm always listening to music or listening to the videos I'm editing. And so obviously audio quality is going to be a big one. But before we get too much into the audio quality, Sometimes when you're working in a space and, and people are going to come over and talk to you, you want to have transparency mode on. And so with these, transparency mode was pretty decent. It's not quite at the level of the AirPods Max, in my opinion, meaning it doesn't sound like you have nothing on your ears. You can tell everything's a little bit more muted, kind of, a little bit more robotic. Regardless, it does a decent enough job of picking up on voices and, and not always uh, relaying all the small white noises. Now, one of the big positives, however, is that you can connect to two devices at the same time, but there's a caveat here. So personally, I like connecting to my phone and to my laptop so I can work and edit, and then if I get a phone call, just easily switch over. But the caveat is you can't use two devices at the same time if you're using one of the higher quality codecs, such as LDAC. Now, if you wanna really prioritize sound quality, you can only connect to one device. It makes sense, of course, you can have higher bit rate, you can't have multiple, you can't have your connection divided. Another thing is when I'm wearing these for a long time, although they're super comfortable, they're definitely a lot better in my opinion than the X Mark IVs from, from two years ago, but I will say that your ears might get a little bit warm. Personally, I didn't really feel like that was a big issue for me, but if you're in a warmer environment, it's definitely gonna catch up to you. Now, like I said, these are comfortable while you're wearing them. They're super lightweight. It's really like the softest foam ever. And the fit and the feel of them really reminds me a lot of the Bose headphones. And so ever since Bose came out with their headphones that look a lot like these, like they slide like that and I don't know, just very similar design. I always loved the Bose headphones for comfort. It feels like you don't have anything on your head, but what Bose lacked that these do have is a little bit more grip. Bose I felt like would fall off my head a little bit more if I was walking around on a phone call, whereas these tend to be a lot more secure. Something I thought was kind of interesting is that they call this vegan leatherette, which uh, is a hilarious marketing term for synthetic fake leather, but regardless, like I said, very comfortable. It should be pretty easy to clean as well. And I'll talk more about replacing the ear cups later on in the video. Now, the last thing with regards to working, like I said, I'm always on phone calls all the time, whether that's Zoom calls for meetings or just actual regular phone calls. So let's get into a microphone test in several different environments. So starting off with the microphone test indoors, you can see it does a pretty decent job. And now this is the microphone with a lot of traffic behind me. It's also pretty breezy out here, but once again, this microphone does a pretty decent job. That's my summary of when I was wearing these while working. Let's talk about when you're relaxing, listening to music, watching movies, whatever it is. These are gonna be great for that, but there are a couple things that you wanna be aware of. Starting off with what I liked about these, of course, the audio quality is a huge positive. Listening to music is very pleasant with these, amazing soundstage, great detail, really analytical, and as far as Bluetooth wireless headphones go, I mean, these are, are really among the best out there. Fantastic bit rate as well using LDAC, which is Sony's codec with a substantially higher bit rate than most other audio, uh, most other codecs out there. Now, if you prioritize a wired connection instead of wireless, whether that is for latency reasons or just the ease of connection, whatever it might be, then you can first of all connect this by a three and a half millimeter jack, as you see right there. And it comes with one in the, in the case, which I think is really convenient. And so that's gonna be great if you're just hanging out, playing games on your laptop or watching Netflix or whatever it might be. But if you're gonna use a desktop, you're probably gonna wanna buy a longer cable. Can't knock Sony for that one. It makes perfect sense the size of cable they gave us. And a big positive here is that when the headphones are off, you can still play music through these using the jack. But one kind of drawback kind of related to that, and I'm not sure why Sony still does this, you're not able to have any kind of playback through USB Type-C cables. Unlike a lot of other headphones like the Sennheiser Momentum 3s, for example, where I can play music from my laptop or my desktop simply by plugging it in with a USB Type-C cable. Now the benefit there is that you can have ANC or transparency on without ever killing your battery. In fact, they're charging these 
batteries while you're listening to music, while you're using your microphone, while you're using ANC, whatever it is, the battery is obviously never going to die if you plug in like that. So again, I wish Sony would do that, especially at this price, but, and of course, when you're just relaxing, I already said sound quality is great, comfort is fantastic, latency is really not that bad. With these, I mean, they're gonna be perfect for a lot of things. Anything I talk about here is kind of, I mean, borderline nitpicking, but I wanna point out things that maybe are not the best about these, or things that I think I would like to see improved. And the next one is really the app. Although I really love these headphones in, in almost all regards, the app gives you what you need, but I think it feels a little outdated. I think Sony needs to kind of adjust maybe the ability to customize your controls for one, even though they're all in the right ear, they're very easy to remember. There are things like, for example, the ANC button, you can customize that, and you can double press it or triple press it, but in both situations, they only give you one option. And it's the same option for both. So if you double press, you can open Spotify. And if you triple press, you could open Spotify. I think that's kind of a wasted feature there. Sony really should be adding more to that. But regardless, it is what it is. And like I said, the controls, at least on the ear cup, the touch controls, super intuitive. Swiping up and down for volume, right and left for forward and back song, double tapping to play pause. I don't know, can't get much better than that. And another benefit is they're only on the right ear cups. You never have to remember right versus left, which ones play, which ones pause, so convenient. And of course, if you've seen any of the reviews when it first came out, you probably know these are also really easy to pair from NFC pairing, just tapping your phone on there, or Google Fast Pair as well. Like as soon as you turn them on, it pops up on an Android device. And of course they come with no plastic or plastic free packaging. Again, great initiative for the, for the environment. I'm happy Sony's doing that. So I work all day, I hang out for a little bit in the evening, and I, I know you really shouldn't do this before you go to bed, but I always work out like way too late. I'll, I'll start a workout like 10 or 11 p.m. and just lift for a while and, and, then, and then shower and go to bed. Not good, I know. But if you wanna wear these headphones when you're working out, this is something that I could have pictured a lot of people doing. You spend a lot of money on a good pair of headphones, and although they're not specifically marketed to working out or to a kind of a fitness crowd, they're still going to be a pretty solid pair. There are a couple things you wanna be aware of. So starting off with the positives, they fit really well. Like I said, much more secure than the Bose headphones in my opinion. So if you look at workouts in like three different levels of, of like head movement, the first one being just squatting and benching and things like that, I've done that, these absolutely pass the test. Super easy, they never fall off. Then level two would be like a run. So going on a run with these, as long as your ears don't, or your head doesn't get really sweaty, they definitely stay on. So if it's a little cooler out, they're gonna be perfect. In fact, in the winter, they'll even keep your ears warm. But in the, the, the heat of the summer, I don't know if these are gonna be the best, and I'll explain why in just a second, but regardless, they passed level two. Level three would be something like burpees. And again, I've done burpees with these on, and they don't fall off my head, which I was really, really impressed with. Considering how comfortable and light they feel, they don't feel like they're clamping your head, and yet they're still on really securely. But there is a caveat. When it comes to working out, one reason that these are not going to be ideal, and that's why I said you don't wanna wear these when it's hot out and, and you know, if you're going for a run, that's because they don't actually have a water resistance rating. So they tell you that you probably shouldn't wear these if it's raining outside or drizzling or if you're really sweaty because you could potentially damage the headphones. Now, that doesn't mean that you definitely will just from being a little sweaty, but it's something that maybe you don't wanna risk. And if you wear these when you're working out, I mean, I recommend cleaning them after every workout, but eventually you're still gonna wanna be hygienic and replace the ear cups. You know, if they, you know, they might get a little smelly or who knows, but replacing the ear cups, the positive here is that they're very easy to replace and they're relatively affordable. You can find them on Amazon for maybe 15 or $20. And like I said, you just pop them out, it just snapped in place. So a little screwdriver along the edge will just pop the snaps right off and you're ready to go. And, and not to talk about sound quality too much again, but when you're working out, you want something that's loud and you want something with a lot of bass capabilities, or at least I do. And these really check the boxes there and make it very easy to get in the zone and work out. And the last thing I wanna talk about with working out is the gestures are very simple, which makes it great for, if you're, doing, if you're on a run, you're working out or whatever it might be, and you wanna skip your song, you just swipe forward. It's super easy. You don't have to worry about finding a small button and double pressing it or triple pressing it or anything like that. Now, the last category I wanna talk about is traveling or commuting. So whether you're on a big trip across the country and you're flying, or if you're just on a bus going into the city, there are some pros and some cons here. The first con is that as far as portability goes, these are not great. Like they're pretty durable and all, but the case is just, it's large. It doesn't let these fold down like the old model did. And so that's a, definitely a big negative there. But regardless of the case size, these are still my favorite headphones for traveling for a couple of reasons. One, 
Like I said, the battery seems to last forever. I can easily use these for 25, 30 hours, and they never die on me. And the second thing, probably the biggest one, is the active noise cancellation. These, in my opinion, are the best AMC headphones on the market right now. And I know this is something that a lot of people debate and there's different, there's a lot more layers to ANC than people realize. It's not just the raw power of the ANC, but rather how much white noise there is, how clean it is, and what frequencies are really blocked out. And I think these do a great job of not just blocking out the frequencies with the active noise cancellation, which are generally the lower frequencies, but they also have some slightly better passive noise blocking than the previous models. So these are gonna block out higher sounds as well, from crowds to voices to whatever it might be. It really does a great job blocking pretty much everything out there. And when you're traveling in public, of course you want something that looks good. In my opinion, these are a little bit more stylish than the X Mark IVs, which were a little bit bland. These I think look a little better. And a huge travel feature these have, if you're on a bus or a train and you wanna hear your stop, is actually the palm, like the cupping feature. So if you just go like this and hold your hand there, it'll go into a transparency mode. You can hear your surroundings. So if you hear like the train conductor start saying something, you can just go like this, listen to what they're saying, and then take your hand away. And it just goes right back to ANC, playing your music loud, and you don't hear anything around you. Of course, you could always just take your headphones off, but cool feature. So that's been it. That's my take on the Sony WH-1000X Mark Vs, arguably the best Bluetooth headphones on the market, or at least my favorite. And like I said, there's really only a few things I wish these had. I wish they folded up, I wish they had an IP water resistance rating, and I wish they were able to play music through USB Type-C. But other than that, really a fantastic pair of headphones. Leave a comment below and let me know what your experience has been like if you've been using these headphones, anything good or bad. I wanna see it in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Thank you.